Mark Hall, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to talk talk wrestling with you, man. As I was just saying, we had a, a Minnesota legend on, Marcus Levesser, and and now you're coming on, man. And, and both you guys had big moments at the uh, – is it the holiday tournament or the Christmas tournament? What's it called? Uh, the Christmas tournament in uh, Rochester. Minnesota. Christmas tournament. So I figured we could just start, man, with one of your first big matches there. I believe it's semifinals. You're in seventh grade against mm-hmm. Ben Morgan. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Break us down with that one there. What happened? <laughs> Oh man, I haven't, I haven't, I actually, uh, that match is on Flow or YouTube maybe. I haven't watched it in a couple of years, but I've, I've definitely seen it since, since that happened. But, um, from what I remember, uh, you know, going into the match, he was ranked in the country. I do know that, um, he was ranked in the country, obviously a target at my weight that I wanted to beat. Um, and I think what happened is uh, just first period, I got a takedown pretty quickly. And then um, I put on a hard ride. I think I, I don't think I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. I think I shut him out or he got a couple of escapes, but I definitely I either shut him out or I bonus pointed him. Um, Bro, you yeah, 10 0 10 0. 10 0. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I shut him out. I put a hard ride on him, turned him a couple of times. Um, and not that, that, I mean, that I always had this mentality, but that match for sure kind of like it gave me like a spark because like I knew I could take down good guys. But also, like when you add in the confidence to like be able to turn good guys, that's dangerous, right? <laughs> it, it, it's one thing to know you can take anybody down, but it's another thing to know you could take anybody down and turn anybody, you know? So um, that is what I remember from that. And he was a junior freestyle all American defending state champ, a junior in high school at one thirty, and you're in seventh grade, Mark Hall. I mean, that one from from the article I read, you had said that, like, dude, the whole gym just went silent. People were like, What the heck just happened? <laughs> now was that yeah, you could you could hear a pin drop for sure. Now, was that the same guy you wrestled later that year at the States where you were on your back for a little bit and had to battle off? I was on my back for like a minute and a half. In the, in the state semis and um yeah i was on my back for he freaking uh like cow catchered me just called me out of position and i was on my back the whole first period <laughs> i was down yeah and, yeah. and for folks who are listening you know we'll have gone through all your stats in the opening but first six times state champ ever so that was one where it's like dude it could have gone either way for a minute there yeah and what well, well, i mean what what makes it even like sweeter is like leading up to that there, there have only been two other seventh grade at the time. There was only two other seventh grade state champions and both were from Apple Valley, Eric DeVos and Destin McCauley. So I was in line to be the third. And so, I mean, obviously like I, I knew that and I, it was like a really like big aspiration of mine, but I, I believe that I could do it. And man, you're down five zero in this in the semis on your on your way to it. It gets kind of dark, but I found a way to pull uh, pull that one out. And what what's going through your head when you're down five zero like that? Um. So obviously, so from the think about so, so from the match we had before the first time, and then going into that one. Like the the energy is completely flipped. So when I beat him, uh, it was silent, like I said. And when he threw, he put me to my back. It was I could I feel like I could feel the ground shaking from how loud that place got. Like when I was on my back that whole time. And and so I get up. One of my coaches, a uh, uh, Jamel Tidwell. Um, great guy, still keep in contact with him to this day. And um, he's just like, we got some work to do. You, he's like, you can do it. You can do it. Cause, cause, cause right after I, I got a bloody nose. So I got to go back to my corner, got fixed up. Um, and that was, that was big. And like hearing, hearing him just tell me like, like you can do it. Like he was like, people do this all the time. It happens all the time. You can do it. And so 
that was that was kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking, like on the way back, I was probably like, "Man, this sucks. I'm in trouble." And then once I got that from him, it was it was wraps. I knew I could do it. And did the rest of it? Was it pretty tight the rest of the way, or did you open things up as it went on? So uh, the the ma- the match ended up going into double overtime. Uh, I ended up tying it up six to six, I believe. Uh, nobody got to take down overtime, double overtime. So people were, I mean, what? obviously leading into this, I, I thought I could uh, ice it there because I rode the crap out of them the first time I wrestled. So 30, 30 seconds each, he, I go down, I get away, and then to ice it, I have to ride him. I think this is how it went, and I and he ended up getting away from me. So now it's seven seven, and I look back at Tidwell. He, I think he chose top. No, 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 no. Here's what happened: double overtime. We we rode each other out. We rode each other out, and then he scored first, and he chose since he scored first, he had choice in the ultimate tiebreaker. He chose top, wow. and then I I got out. Losing. Yes, I reversed him. Yeah. Whoa. That's what happened. We wrote each other out. Yeah. Wow. Mm. That's crazy, man. Up Jim must have been going nuts that night. Yeah, it was it it was a I mean the Minnesota State tournament, like they get a good turnout, man. Like they have a lot of wrestling fans there. Uh they do it at the uh XL Energy Center where the wild play. Mm-hmm. And the only like the only other state tournament I bet that has like a better turnout than that is probably football and hockey. Other than that, and in some of those, it has like there's like there's a lot of football divisions. So I bet some of them, I bet some of them, like some of those divisions, Minnesota wrestling has better. Wow, I mean uh, it's big up there. I mean, yeah, and and the fact that it's only three divisions that's pretty cool too, because a lot of times states get crazy with the divisions. Yeah, yeah, three divisions I think is like is the most a state should have. Yeah, if not less, right? Yeah. So you mentioned Coach Tedwell got you through the helped get you through the match. I I didn't know a lot about him, and you know what I hear about Apple Valley is that you guys had so many good coaches in there. So like, who were some of the main guys that were influencing you when you were at Apple Valley from a coaching standpoint? Um, Jamel Tidwell, he coached me all six years. Uh, about halfway through uh, my high school career, a guy by the name of Tony Abbott started coming in. Um, he was, he wrestled at Augsburg. I think he was a one or two time all American maybe. Uh, and he, he really helped me. Like he, he wasn't the greatest on his feet, which was good. Cause I had Tidwell for most of the stuff on my feet and some, you know, some other just scrambling things or whatever, but Abbott was a hammer on top, man. Like it took me, it probably took me like a good year and a half two years before i could like confidently choose down on him and like know that i would get away he wow. and which which obviously like he's older he's he was good at what he did in college but like for me i was i excelled at a pretty high rate i would say and and like the harder situations that i got put in the the like i feel like the quicker i could adapt to them um and that was just from, you know, like all the knowledge and people around me that I could learn from. So for it to, for him to like ride me like that was traumatizing sometimes. <laughs> Dude, we're talking about um, an eighth grader though and a grown man. Like, and like it was still that, that it bothered you that much though. Yeah. Yeah. I got, wow. Cause well, here's, here's the thing. I think like, this is how this might've been something. I think this is something that sets the, good guys apart from the great guys from the um you know like that level was to me like him riding me out like that like didn't defeat me it was more of like i'm gonna figure out how to get away from this guy every single time but it was it was it was like motivation for me Mm -hmm. um and a lot of a lot of situations were like that right like guys beating me up like i always just gave gave full effort and knew knew at that time like maybe they're getting me now but sooner or later i'll figure it out you know so i think that was a that was a big part of like like the mindset so you're inherently just like an optimistic positive person that you would eventually get it done yeah yeah 
Um, yeah, him. And then uh, lastly, probably uh, a guy he's been wrestling like at the uh, Veteran Worlds for the last few years, uh, Rudy James has been a big part of my wrestling career as well. Other guys in there had some great coaches. Those three, though, man, they, they put a lot of time in me. Solid. I mean, and you were wrestling a lot. <clears throat> like, as a kid, you were wrestling, like, 200-some matches a year, if not more. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, something I mean, where, like, go ahead. School, yeah. Up to before, middle school. Yeah, before middle school. Up to middle school, yeah. And your story was like everyone had heard bits and pieces of it, but you grew up in Michigan initially, correct? Correct. And uh, uh, Brett Metcalf's older brother was your youth coach at some point. Yep, Chase Metcalf. Mm-hmm. So talk about the Davidson program back then. Yeah, that uh, it was it was perfect for me, right? Like being someone I like with the time that I started wrestling was the time of like Davison's dominance in in Michigan. I think they won five or six team state titles in a row as I was growing up. And really, I mean, now that I think about it, like just seeing all that winning was awesome. It was so cool as like someone growing up, um, growing up in wrestling, like my dad wrestled, my brother wrestled um, and seeing like, that you know our area the guys that I, I live 10 miles from every single one of them right they're freaking winning everything they go to so uh but it was it was just a great wrestling environment a lot of those guys were coaching my practices um doing privates with them yeah they they were uh a good group well you had reader donahoe metcalf i mean Man, mm-hmm. three NCAA champs out of one high school is crazy. Yep. There's also Trevor Perry was a four time NCAA qualifier. Um a couple guys went D one as is uh as well. I think that his name is Keenan. He went to uh UNC. Um graduated from there. Uh I think there's probably a couple more in there, but yeah, this hammers everywhere. And you said your dad wrestled, and obviously you guys were super close because you guys went all over the country. When did you start going at the 250 match per year pace? Uh, I'd say pretty soon on, probably around like fourth, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Probably were those years that I was getting those those type of refs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> were other parents like saying like, "Dude, that's a little crazy," or were you just in love with wrestling and was just going cra- going hard with it? Uh, it was both. It was both. Uh, parents were saying it was crazy, probably. I mean, being that young, I never heard any accounts of it, but I'm sure my my parents got some of it. Um, but also, it was, um, it was just yeah, my love and my drive, man. I, I didn't, I didn't mind going someplace new every every weekend. Like I, I thought of it as like it was, it was a cool, it was a cool thing. I, I didn't see it as like taxing. One weekend I was in. Ohio and the next weekend I might have been in Oklahoma and then the next weekend I might have been in Pennsylvania right like right. that's awesome <laughs> kids, don't get to, kids don't get to travel like that so I thought it was pretty cool and what kind of workouts were you doing back then like throughout the week to to be winning at that level so I mean I played I played soccer and football as well so I would uh I probably have soccer practice like right after school or um uh or like like football practice whatever season it was in and then after that I'd come home and do wrestling practice probably I probably only had to do like two practices like that like once or twice a week um but for the most part I'd wrestle three or four times a week football practice three or four times a week and if they overlap they overlap but um yeah those were those are my three loves. I still miss soccer and football. Um, really? But yeah, I love being able. I love being able to play like any, like either of those. Um, just like, like recreationally. Yeah. It'd be fun to do a team sport like that because you, you that kind of like environment you get when you're on a team is 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 pretty awesome. Yeah, and what made it well, what made football better for me was 
all like uh all the guys on my team were wrestlers <laughs> so <laughs> so i most of those guys like like i think that's probably what made it easier as well as like i wasn't the only one i wasn't like the only one in our club that was doing that right like mm-hmm. all of the guys on the team would go to football practice and then we'd come back and, and go to wrestling practice right after so um but yeah it, those are good years so knowing you guys were so close, was it hard your first year you moved to Kentucky for uh, seventh grade? Yeah, yeah, it was it was tough. It was very tough, but essential, right? It was at the time it was hard, but I mean my it was more so just my dad that had the vision, right? And I believed in that vision. We had me and my pops had pretty good chemistry um on those matters. So um yeah it was it was tough though so from what i read you did football in in davison seventh grade in the fall january through like april you moved to a school in kentucky who had mostly an ohio schedule so you're wrestling high school ohio high school level tournaments as a seventh grader Mm -hmm. now like when's the first time you heard of this dad comes home and he's like yo what do you think of this or like how did it come up pretty much uh um i at the time so at the time I knew I understood this that in Michigan, even as middle like middle schoolers, you can't practice with the high school team. At can't any time, practice. I don't, I don't think at any wow. at any point. Yeah. So that made things kind of tough, especially the the at the rate that I was that my possible I felt like I was getting better. He I'm sure it was like he just didn't want to see me plateau. He didn't want right. to see me like, like keep wrestling guys my age. He knows all along wrestling guys older than me has been what has gotten me to this to that point. So I'm sure he did some type of research or he probably knew. He 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 went to college in Kentucky for a few years. Um so I'm sure he had some idea of it before, but that was when, that's how it came up to me. Like, hey, what do you think about going to uh, Kentucky? And I'm sure my my first answer was probably no. Probably, right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to live in Kentucky. Leave my leave my family, my mom, my sisters, my brother. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but, what did mom say? Oh man, she was uh, probably not too happy about it. She not too happy about it, but not that she wasn't supportive. If I did want to do it. Um, yeah, it was, it was essential. We, as a family, we kind of, I think we could look back and like, no, we did the right thing. But at the time, right. It's tough. You don't know. I could have, I could have, I could have went there and sucked <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and suck and then kept sucking a hundred percent could have happened, but it didn't. So I'm happy about it. Man, I remember as like a freshman, sophomore in college, you know, whenever I would get a little homesick, even, you know, so as a seventh grader, I can't imagine like mm-hmm. that's, that's tough, man. And so you must've had a pretty clear plan then in seventh grade that you're on a trajectory of, you know, really special, you know, talents here, you know, really elite level. Did you have like a goal to be like an Olympic champ or something like that at that age that was guiding what you guys were doing? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I would say, I'd say any any wrestler that was as skilled, like as skilled as I was, and not to say I was like the most skilled ever, but I would say like just to drive to want to like get better all the time and and win wrestling matches, probably had those goals, right? Want to be an Olympic champion, right. champion, and all the wrestlers we looked up to, and have watched right are the ones who did that um but i would say i don't think that like that wasn't like the ultimate driving force i think it was more so just like that trust i had with my pops and just like we both we both knew i could keep getting better um so we knew that that was the best way to do it and you had the hunger to get better. Like you were relentless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Man, I love it. So the next yeah. year you go to Apple Valley and initially you were planning on going only for middle school and going to high school in Michigan. Correct. When did that change? Um, it actually, that's how it was. I went seventh and eighth grade in Apple Valley. I started the school year in Michigan, my freshman year. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Started what? the school year, my freshman year, uh, was playing freshman football. And I think this is what kind of like, this is partially something. I think I was just down from, we were stinking at football. Like, I think that's what it was. Um, I was just like, man, I go, this losing sucks. Like, because before that, I, I think I might've lost that way with the wrestling, the wrestling guys, I might've lost maybe like one football game throughout my like little kid career. Like, <laughs> when it was the team of wrestlers, we, we beat everybody pretty good. Um, and so I think I was just down from that. And also missing a lot of my Minnesota friends that I had made that I developed like pretty good connections with. Um, most of my friends were wrestlers anyways. So I just sent it. So you're in a little bit of a was, funk, a little bit of a yeah. funk your freshman year, kind of missing things. And yeah, I told my dad, I was like, dad, I want to go back to Minnesota. This was in like early October. I, mean, I thought it would be the opposite that you'd want to be <laughs> back home in, in, in yeah. Michigan. But at that point you had gotten so close to those Apple Valley guys. I mean, yeah. wow. Yeah. Dude, the, the Minnesota wrestling, like high school writers and pundits must've been going crazy when a two time <laughs> state champ seventh and eighth grade heads out of state. And like at, at this time, no one had won six. So was that on your mind a little bit as well? The possibility of winning six or was yeah. that it was okay. Yeah. That as well. That's crazy. Yeah. So were you doing it where like you would do just the high school? Um, so like in seventh and eighth grade, would you do just the wrestling season in Minnesota, then come back to the summer in Michigan? Um, yes. The, my first seventh, my, my seventh grade year in Minnesota, which was my second, mm -hmm. I got held back in seventh grade twice. Um, I finished the season, finished the school year went back home to Michigan and then my, but my eighth grade summer, I went from Minnesota and then I went to Colorado Springs for the summer. OTC. Yeah. Wow. How long were you out there for? That was for most of the summer. So June to early August school started probably late or early September. Holy smokes. That's, that's a, that's an incredible experience at that young. So was coach Slay the, the resident coach at the time? Mm -hmm. yep. So what kind of a routine were you on out there? Whatever the men were doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, twice a, practice twice a day. Um, my dad, my dad moved out there with me as well. Oh, so nice. he was, he was getting me everywhere I needed to go practice twice a day, a conditioning workout in there somewhere um incline climbing you know um so yeah it was wow. pretty rigorous were you ever at a point during all this where you were feeling like you didn't want to do it or did you want to do it all the way through uh there was there was definitely doubts um negativity i think i think my dad did a great job of like supporting supporting the decisions that I could make on my own and also giving guidance on the decisions that I might have been choosing wrong. Um, never showed like disappointment for any time I didn't want to do something or did want to do something. He found a way to do it, which was great. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely some negativity for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine that's just a tremendous amount of work. And the cool thing though, about when you're at Apple Valley is you're around a team of studs. Like I was looking back at some of those lineups, you had Gable in the latter years, you had Seth Gross. When you came in, Dustin McCauley was the man at that time. I remember it. Like, did you guys work out quite a bit? Yeah, we wrestled some, not definitely not 
Probably not as much as I should have been wrestling, Dustin. But yeah, we wrestled some. But also, you- I was just like I was the young buck on the on the team, so he was mostly gone with Tidwell and coaches, as I would have done in that situation. Right. As well. And who were some of the guys you were closest with, like throughout your time at Apple Valley on the wrestling team? Um, definitely Seth. Uh, another kid, his name was uh, his name uh, Malu Wayward. We had, um, really close with him. He was a three-time state champion. Uh, his brother Daniel Wayward, so great friends, people I keep in touch with. Um, Gable, those latter years, like you said, his brother Bobby. Um, I would say, uh, his kid named Nate Larson. Okay. Good. Shout out Nate Larson. Yep, Nate Larson, Kyle Rathman. Great relationship with him. Yeah, just it, guys you know, guys you probably don't know. Kyle Rathman's a couple. I think he's uh, might be an All-American D3. Uh, Nate Larson was a state champion in high school by the end of it. So some some good friends that I had. Dude, and you guys were like, yeah, I remember hearing about Apple Valley during this time. You guys had a reputation of just rolling in and dominating people. When you're within the state of Minnesota, though, were you guys like one of the hated teams because you had a lot of transfers and recruits? And outside of it, you know, I, I wondered if, if you guys dealt with any of that because where I was growing up, Bettendorf was that team. Dude, people hated Bettendorf, bro. Hated them. But, yeah. uh, you know, they're good people, you know. But, uh, dude, Apple Valley was like the king of it back in that era. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, 100%. They People wanted to see us lose for many reasons. That was for sure one of them. Um, for sure. We liked it though. Oh, I bet, man. It was awesome. And, you know, after, you know, not after, but as you're having this incredible high school career, you start doing some crazy things on the world level and, you know, two time junior world champ, cadet world champ, and some of your teammates are the guys we're still seeing now, you know, the great Spencer Lee, um, you know, Dayton fix. What was your first memory of representing the red, white, and blue at the cadet worlds? Uh, My first memory was, uh, pretty much, but before the trip even started, I lost my passport <laughs> in, a, in a hotel in Austria. And, no, and the worlds weren't even in Austria. It was like a layover. We had like a couple hour layover, <laughs> so we we were like saunaing and stuff, right? And then I didn't. What what made it bad is that you didn't have to have your like once you're in that airport, you didn't have to have it to get back in, mm-hmm. right? So like I just showed them my, showed them my uh, ticket, and that was all I needed. I didn't have to have my passport. So we get to Slovakia where the worlds are, and now I need my passport to get in my hotel room. My passport was nowhere to be found. No. So, yeah, yeah. What'd you do? So the coaches, um called the hotel in Austria. They got in touch with them, found my passport, and they expedited it to me in Slovakia. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's the yeah. worst feeling you could have. Enter abroad without your passport. Oh yeah. And like even on top of that, like no parents. I was oh, like, wow. I was I was in tears. I was in tears on the hotel floor. Like oh for sure. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> um yeah, yeah. So that was, that's my first, my very first memory. Other than that, uh, wrestling wise, was awesome. We had three world champs that year. Um, Who are they? Uh, myself, Spencer Lee, and Jared McLaren. Wow. Mm-hmm. And was it quite a different feel wrestling the the Eastern European guys? Yeah, that was yeah that was my first real my first time getting hands on them. So it definitely was different. And man, you look at, I know you went to the Worlds this year as JV's workout partner. I mean, when you just look at how far USA Wrestling's come during that, you know, your first time there, probably 2014, 2015 to now, like it is just incredible to see when Team USA rolls into a tournament. Like we're, we're dominating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, so uh, just to correct you, I, I didn't go with JV this year. I couldn't. You didn't? No. I I thought I saw a post uh, that you went. Yeah. So, Literally, literally, I think two days before we were supposed to leave, I uh, I tore a ligament in my foot. So oh. I, haven't, I haven't wrestled since. 
Um, so, so were you yeah, training I, with them all summer though? What's that? Were you training with JV all summer, just being in the same room or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then right before that, so right before, um, uh, right before we left, uh, bless Tyler Berger, man. He was supposed to move in like a few days after Jordan left, right? Move into Philly. Um, they ended up convincing him to be JV's partner. Gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah, he got lucky. If not, he's going to have to take some dude he probably never trained with. <laughs> Coach know? Slay going to have to lace him up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, now yeah, I'm going to have to get after, uh, Kevin, man, wrestling Philly guy. He's like, he's my guy on Twitter for anything pen related. And, oh, uh, yeah. He will, he'll let you know, uh, man, he'll, he'll let you know anything that's going on <laughs> in the Philly wrestling ecosystem. When people ask him his favorite sports team in Philadelphia, he says the pen RTC. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro know. oh my oh my god the guy's dedicated yeah um <clears throat> and so you when did you get to Penn? was jb already there when you came in um we were jb and i were a part of the like the same recruiting class so what i mean by that is like we me me jb and someone else was on uh the zoom call like these like we were us three were like the three three guys that coach Slade was going after for, for the, the year right um and so we he he wasn't here when i got here he was finishing out the the olympic process right he stayed stayed in nebraska until the olympic trials were over with and then after that it was when he moved so so i was in philly for probably six or seven months before he got here and did you know you were going to coach at Penn the whole time or did you just come in as a prtc guy uh i i didn't even i didn't want to uh really I didn't want to coach. yeah uh so so they were on a covid year um and like the ivy league took the took the year off of sports so mm -hmm. uh throughout that whole year it was only coach reyna and pearsall so they didn't there wasn't really like they knew they had time to figure out a staff. I think if they wanted to, they were doing a great job on their own, right? Just them um, mm -hmm. figuring it out, making sure the team got better. So, at but yeah, at that time when I first got here, I didn't really. I was that was part of the process was just being an athlete, and then I think I you know I just got to really started to get to know the guys really well, and. I think a big part of it as well was knowing how to, how to get the best out of them. Uh, not only for myself, but for them as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the better they get, the better I'll get. Uh, so that, that was a big, a big part of why I switched my thinking. Um, but yeah, at first I wasn't, I wasn't into it. It's a big change from being, you know, you know, the quote unquote selfish wrestler where you're focused on yourself to being a, a coach where it's totally selfless. And now that you're into it, are you, you know, full on goals of becoming a coach or, or are you still focused on your competitive career as well? Uh, I have a great, I have a great uh, supporting cast here. Mm -hmm. And I think because of that, I, I have a great, uh, a, like a great aspiration to, to do both, um, mm -hmm. you know, be a great coach, be the most selfless man I can be. And then when it's time to be an athlete, I have the freedom to be the most selfish man I can be. Right. I, they, they do a great job of um, giving me that freedom. So I think it's awesome. I think I got a great situation here for myself. Dude, Coach Reyna is the man. I love that guy. I love everyone I've talked to about the Penn program. Like it's just, uh, as they call it, the ecosystem. It's awesome out there. You got Beat the Streets, Penn, Drexel, and then the RTC. Man, it's it's a lot of energy going on right there. Yeah, no doubt. Um, a lot of growth, and still still some growing to do. You know, and the the uh, the organization as a whole knows that and attacks that every day yeah and you got one of my favorites the harvey twister bj futrell on staff as well 
guys doing rope climbs still, man. So you guys got an incredible staff. Coach Pearsall, I mean, season's looking good. Tell us a little bit about Z- Doug Zapp, man. I- I've been seeing his name. W- what kind of a wrestler is he? Doug is a uh, man. <laughs> Doug's an animal. <laughs> um, um, after the the U.S. Open this year, he had a great U.S. Open. Uh, one of the nicknames he earned was uh, instead of Doug Zaff, sometimes we'll call him Dog Zaff. <laughs> man, he because he wrestled like a dog at at the U.S. Open this year. But man, he's he's he has one of the best motors I've ever seen. Like up there with like some of the best motors I've seen at Penn State. Right, Zane, Jason, Bo, these guys who like don't know how to get tired. Doug's one of those guys. He will. <laughs> He keeps wrestling for seven minutes and more if he needs it. Um, just a great lefty. He's a great lefty guy, man. He man, he can fight you to death too. Dog zap. That's yeah. the best nickname I've ever heard of. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you think about all the practices you've been through, all the high stakes tournaments you've been in, I mean, you got to help these guys so much with the technique and the mindset. Is like the mindset and the visualization something you did a lot when you were a competitor and still now, obviously, like when you're getting ready for a big event, you get into that visualization side of it. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I, I personally think that's like 85, 80, 85% of it. Right. Really? Like, I think it's, I think it's huge. I would, anybody who, if they wanted to be good at wrestling, I would say, that is an essential in the sport. You have to be able to visualize. You have to be able to see yourself winning those big matches, see yourself winning those big moments over and over and over. You can't just do it. Like it's not something you can do once. If if you want to be the top, like top of the ladder, right? Mm-hmm. That's I think it's it's huge in the sport. So because of that, obviously, I'm going to do my best to help our guys. And when you were, like, when you were well. at Penn State, for example, would you do it, like, when you're running, when you're sauning after practice? Like, what was your routine? My routine was mostly after practice. We didn't run a lot. Um, you can't sauna in college either, so it was always after practice. They changed the rule, thankfully. But, like, when I was in school, you couldn't use saunas. Um. But yeah, definitely after practice and my free time before practice is big too. Seeing the seeing the things I want to get better at that day, right? Whatever it took. Um, those are those are the things I would I would think about. But I didn't. It wasn't like consuming. It wasn't like it was like it was all I thought about. I did a pretty good job of compartmentalizing, right? And so you would do like specific day things you were getting ready for that day, but then also big picture nationals, NCAs, that kind of thing. Yeah. And when you first got to that Penn state room, what was the biggest change for you coming from Apple Valley and the OTC? Um, I would say there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of big change. It was, it was like restart. I would say the best way to put it is it was like restarting the process. What I mean by that is when I first got to Apple Valley, um, I got my butt kicked, right? Like you said, we had hammers on the team, multiple times state champions up and down the lineup. So I got my butt kicked frequently. And then um, but I learned and I got and I got just kept getting better. And as those guys left and graduated, moved on, um, I started to become the guy that could kick some butts, you know? And so I would say the process was the same at Penn State, right? I was familiar with getting into a room and getting my butt kicked, but I was also familiar with getting better and believing myself. So it wasn't, there wasn't really too many like foreign environments. Mm -hmm. Who was doing the butt kickings at Penn State when you got there? Everybody. (laughs) <laughs> Kendall beat my butt. Uh, Bo beat my butt. I actually, so I wrestled Jason in a freestyle uh, to I'd make the world team freestyle tournament. 
Um, I beat him. I beat him at the nationals that year, and then I beat him at like for the world team trials. I beat him twice. So that was freestyle though. When I got in there for folk style, he beat me up. <laughs> he, out, he he would out scramble me and everything. He was putting me in wind dixies. <laughs> um, get you know like just I needed I needed to add a layer right. I needed to get better. So yeah, I, I was I was just as free game as any other freshman probably coming in. Right. But I think just the difference was that I feel like. I just I got better at a faster rate than than uh, somebody else who could have been put in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was it was free butt wolfing anywhere. I was getting and, my butt kicked all the time. And then when you were older though, like was Carter Starachi in the room at all when you were there? Like was he one of the young guys coming in? When I was a senior, he was a true freshman. Got it. So you got guys like that trying to take you off, off the top ladder, you know? So it's like, it's a repetitive cycle, like you were saying. Yeah. And honestly, honestly, uh, at that time, Carter provided a lot of motivation for me because when I was a true freshman, I came in and took the senior spot, Gino Morelli. He was a, great competitor uh for Penn State as well and and so I I didn't want that to happen to me because I knew Carter was good I knew he was good I knew he was going to be good maybe before I mean other people probably knew he was going to be good but I knew he was going to be like the best right so I wanted to make sure that situation did not happen to me (laughs) you know I love the chip he wrestles with on his shoulder, man. And like knowing he got bronze at the U23s, he's going to come back on fire this season. I mean, because you know, yeah. going into it, he thought he was going to roll everyone. And he, you know, maybe he should have, but like, dude, he, he's such a, just an aggressive competitor. I love watching him get out there. Yeah. So as a, as a coach, as a coach, right, a guy comes off, comes off of a U23 bronze medal and you give him, right, there's nothing but praise. It's amazing. That's, not many people get to do that and, and rest and probably some many don't know, but wrestling for the United States and doing that is a feat in its own, right? Mm-hmm. Like making the team in some cases in the USA is great. So I would say as a coach, like that's your encouragement. But like you said, Carter's like, I cannot believe I'm coming home from this tournament with a bronze medal. I can't like, He's probably in disbelief. <laughs> he, the the guy the he lost in the semis, and the guy got he ended up losing eight to seven. And to start the second period, the guy got a takedown and a lace, and got that's how he got his eight points, right? So this is just a tough situation. Battled back as well as he could. I mean, being down at eight zero in that situation is not ideal for anybody no matter mm-hmm. who you are so but yeah just he he always has that chip on his shoulder he always wants to be the best and i'm sure one day he will be his practice partners this week look out <laughs> dude's coming for heads <laughs> yeah yeah now w- when you think about your career just an you know amazing nca career and the freestyle career we're just getting started you know a lot a lot of years left Freestyle, or excuse me, NCAA career, come out, win it as a true freshman. Just an incredible accomplishment. And that begins your your career or your rivalry with Zahid. When you think about the matches you had with Zahid over the years, what kind of uh, things come to mind in terms of like his competitiveness and, and what he brought to you to raise your level? Um, He definitely brings something different to the table. Uh, he's probably one of the taller guys that was one of the taller guys at the weight class. Um, definitely one of the fastest guys at the weight, at the weight class. So I think knowing what made it really fun is like going into the NCAA tournament, right? Like obviously take it one match at a time, but it's always, it's, it's fun seeing him on the other side of the bracket or on right. Like, Mm-hmm. No one it's like it's a collision course. Um and so I think it was uh 
it was a great time, you know, being able to share the, share the mat with him. And we just, we always, we're two guys who are always going to, you know, give our best, whatever that looks like for the day. We're always, always going to put our best foot forward. Um, we're always prepared to go into a tournament and are prepared to wrestle each other, right? And prepared to wrestle anybody else who steps in front of us. So I think I think that that put a lot of like emphasis into that though. Knowing like when we are across across the side of a bracket or we are in the same tournament, like that mental edge of knowing I'm prepared to wrestle anybody there was important. It's on at that point. Like you see you and him, like your freshman year, you're gonna meet up in the semis. It's like Let's go. Game on. Yeah. And, yeah. and we've been we've been wrestling our whole lives. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna ask if you guys wrestled at high school before that. I'm sure you had. Yeah. So actually and in high school we didn't. I I grew and he was smaller in high school. He was like I was when I was one seventy, I think he was wrestling one twenty six, maybe one thirty two. And then oh. yeah, his senior his senior year was when he had that big that big jump. So we didn't wrestle much in high school, but before that, when we were kids, we wrestled a lot. And his brother was on the scene, you know, still, you know, still was throughout college, but definitely as a kid and in high school too. Did you wrestle him at all? Yep. I yeah. actually, I wrestled him a few times in high school and since, since then, but yeah, I've always, I've, we've always had feuds with the Valencia family. <laughs> Man, it's just so fun to see two guys like you in their prime going at it. It happens so rarely. I think of Mark Perry, Johnny Hendricks, uh, Ben Askren, Chris Pendleton. I mean, there's there's only a few where it happens like that every year at the same you know, same weight um, or pretty close to the same weight. And so, like, your freshman year, when you have him in the semis, you're one match away from the finals. Do you have any type of pre-match routine that you go through in terms of, like, self-talk or or what you're thinking or how you're warming up? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I didn't do anything differently mm-hmm. than what I would have done. Right. It was all, I prepared for every match the same way. So whatever I was doing, um, in the first round, I was doing it in the second round, third round. Um, so yeah, I had, I had my things that I like to do. It wasn't like anything groundbreaking or anything, but I uh, just it's something I like to do and it kept my head on straight. And for the youngsters listening, they'd love to know what Mark Hall did before his matches to get himself ready. Is there anything you can remember like that you would do every time? Uh just like like little things. I would always uh shake my legs out on the mat for every match. Uh I did this thing called uh cross patterning. Um just like with my hands and my legs. Um what else would I do? I liked having I liked having a fresh pair of socks too. Respect. That was the okay. Other thing. I tried. I tried. I didn't like wearing like. If I could, I tried not to wear like the same pair of socks like two matches in a row. I liked having a fresh pair of socks, right? Which was good for the NCAA tournament because you're wrestling one match a session. Yeah. So I didn't have to true. worry about like going back to like wrestling two matches on on the loser side, which was great. And you talk about wrestling a, a bunch of matches close. Were you guys still doing the national duels back when you were in college? No. No, we didn't do national duels. Or yeah. No, we did we did uh the like I forget what it was called. It might have it was when we wrestled Oklahoma State my freshman year. That wasn't that was a part of whatever that was. It yeah. wasn't it could have been anywhere, right? Like it wasn't on our schedule as Oklahoma State. Right. Um, Is that when you wrestled Crutchmer? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dude, those no, Penn that, no, we didn't we didn't do national rules. Yeah, Penn State's got a nice way of keeping the schedule nice and light. And then as they move into the Big Ten season, things really pick up. And then, you know, we know what Penn State does. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, and now that you're at you're at Penn, you're heading into the season. We'll just wind down with this, Mark. You know, when you look at the next three to six months for you, when is your next time on the mat? And how is things looking in the Penn preseason here? Penn preseason's looking great. Guys had a great preseason. Uh, we got Russell offs coming up. Guys getting ready for that, getting down to weight. Um, I think 
programmatically, I think Coach Ray, this is probably I think Coach Rayner would tell you this is probably one of his more exciting years, right? We have 10, 10 NCAA qualifiers on the team, which wow. is I think up there with the most in D one right now, which is great. Got a, some NCAA experience and um yeah, we're excited. I think personally, uh I'm not sure when I'll wrestle again. I'm just having fun training, having fun lifting, having fun being around the guys. Um, to me, that's that's what it's all about, man. Like, I can wrestle whenever. Um, I don't think – there's there's obviously urgence to get a tournament on the schedule, but at the same time, uh, I got a great competitive environment here. So uh, I think that's what – that's a good silver lining to have. Um, yeah, yeah, we're excited. I mean, who you got? You got you got Berger in there, JB, mm-hmm. yourself. I'm sure there's some college guys you're scrapping around with. Mm-hmm. So the the pin RTC is in a good place. Yeah, yeah. Mark Hall, it's been a pleasure, my friend. We always sign down with this. You know, I, podcast is called Wrestling Changed My Life. You're still in the thick of it. So wrestling is your life, but like, what's, what's one thing you've given you that you've really noticed now that you've kind of moved away from Penn state and are in another chapter, like how, how has wrestling impacted or helped you the most? I'd say wrestling, wrestling gave me, has given me resilience, you know, finding the good and the bad, um, perspective, man, that's probably the biggest thing wrestling to get a just perspective on life, on sports, anything, anything life has to offer. Wrestling's given me perspective on it. You know, I think it's uh, probably one of my favorite things about myself is I humbly, I think I'd say I have a great perspective on life. Right. So like in terms um, of how important like a match is in the grand scheme of things versus how it is in that moment. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, wrestling's been a big part of my life, will continue to be a big part of my life, and hopefully one day I can make wrestling a big part of someone else's life. Too, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm sure you're doing that now, and for all of us fans, like it's you've been a big part of all of, you know, all of college wrestling fans for a long time, man, so it's you've given a lot of joy to people, and I'm excited to watch you in the future and excited to watch Penn this season. Of course. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You got it, my man. Let's get that podcast out. I'd love to hear you on the mic. It'd be fun to have it, man. (laughs) Sounds good. (laughs) All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you.